Peace. From an undisclosed location, welcome to another broadcast of In the Air AM. Here is your host, George Billing. From the deepest depths of the earth, in a non-disclosed location, I bid you uh, good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever you are right now. I'm your host, George Billing, and uh, welcome to another radio broadcast of In the Air uh, AM live talk radio throughout the night. It's good to be here. Um, We're going to be doing something a little different on the show. Tonight, we're going to be uh, talking about the shadow people. It will be a big change of topic from uh, what we have talked about uh, in the past broadcast. So scratch that, rewind, and let's get on to another track. I've looked into um, finding someone uh, who I could interview tonight about shadow beings, and I have found Thunderstruck. Uh, So we'll see what he knows. Now, Thunderstruck is an Earth Titan elder and a Middle Realm leader on the uh, sweet by-and-by highway. He is a shaman and uh, is a well-respected Native American. As a teacher and a healer, he has influenced uh, many and is the author of You Are Not Alone. But uh, we will get to him uh, later. Now, you may remember that I I can't recall a week or a week and a half ago, I read an email that uh, a mysterious person had sent to me about shadow beings. Now, I I thought this was incredible. We have a uh, larger-than-life phenomenon in our midst, honest, right-hand-to-God truth, and I've had three or four emails uh, sent to me about the Black Mass. The story is... Well, let's just say uh, it's a bit scary. It described beings made of uh, dark energy. Now, we all experience these shadow demons. Well, maybe not all of us, but uh, every now and then, out of the corner of your eye, uh, you might see uh, some sort of movement like a uh, shadow. Now, you may think, what the heck was that now? A movement? You look and you see nothing. Well, I got another email today from someone uh, completely different, and I would like to share uh, that with you right now. Now, the email reads, here, Dear Mr. George Billing, my name is Chad Dower, and I have recently uh, found an old box my great-great-grandfather, Tom, kept hidden in his home. Now, the box had items from the 1940s. Uh, the box also held things that he had kept from his old friend, John Walters. Uh, John Walters was a private detective who was looking into a series of strange uh, events. The investigations involved what the world would refer to now as uh, shadow beings, shadow people, or black mass. Um, one of the sinister encounters uh, my uh, great-grandpa had was with a uh, being wearing a fedora, long trench coat, and uh, bore a striking resemblance to what is known as the Hat Man. Uh, One note in the journal read, he was like a shadow mass trying to wear human clothes. He had glowing uh, red eyes and uh, spoke to me through my mind. I couldn't understand him at first, but the more I heard the voice, the clearer it got. And as he describes... In his old musky journal, the thing was not human at, uh, at all. I was wondering if you could talk about shadow beings on your show. I'm a big fan of In the Air I Am, and uh, I listen to you all the time. Thank you, Chad Dower, uh, for your email. Well, let's, let's get right into the program for tonight. Wow, a detective story. John Walters? Almost sounds like a noir. And since we're talking about shadow beings on the show, uh, I guess tonight's episode would be called Shadow Noir. (laughs) J-Wax presents Shadow Noir! 
Written by J. Ascent and script consultant David Phillips. Starring Koloff Starnis, Olivia Steele, Thomas Anderson, J. Ascent, and featuring the vocal talents of Dimitri Mario Young and Ty Anderson. With special guests George Billing and Raymond Vance as Ray Vandrella, child star. Dennis Collins as the narrator. Music by Alexander Nyman and Mandy Ninninger. Artwork by J. Ascent, Mandy Ninninger, David Phillips, and Ali Baker. I am the Hat Man, and this is how my story begins. It was a dark night. It was a dark night, darker than it had ever been before. I was trying to drown the memories of dead prostitutes when a femme fatale busted in the room. I didn't care that she had legs that could reach to the moon. I had a long day and her curves wouldn't change my mind from being alone with my good friend Jack tonight. I'm closed. You can't be closed. You're the sort who can't even pay your electricity bills. What do you want? How about we start with, have a seat, Detective Walters? I am a lady, after all. You've got a name, Miss? Teresa. My name is Teresa Chadwick. What can I do for you, Miss Chadwick? A few of my girls have gone missing. Maybe you've seen them. Chelsea Church, Lisa Catlin. Any of them ring a bell? Those girls are dead. You know them. You see dozens like them working by the old buffalo on Boca Raton. Lost girls selling their bodies. Ha! I say good riddance. But you knew my girls. As I said, they are dead. I've seen the bodies. Lost. Look, I have been through the crime scene. Lost, Detective Walters. They allowed you to see what they wanted you to see. Name your right. I'll pay you. Remember, though, it would be best to be on your guard. Uh, I, I don't follow. Don't worry. You'll find the clues. As I watched her leave, I could only think of how glad I was that she was gone. The name Teresa Chadwick was well known. She was a pimp, and if she heard me call her such, <laughs> she would have killed me. It was freezing outside. I knew that wouldn't matter to her frozen heart. I just walked into the bedroom and laid my head on the cool pillow. I was waiting for the day to break bring me out of bed for another horrible day, as usual. Turns out these girls were off. Their apartments were a mess, furniture soaked in blood. This latest development was told to me earlier this week. I remembered it as I dreamed. Some young prostitutes, a double homicide, I left when I got the call. I know it was real. Lost. Teresa sounded like she was a bit lost herself. I am an overseer of my shadows, and yet she stifles me. She made me who I am today, chained and forgotten by so many. A ghostly monster hidden by conspiracy and shadow. Keys are still outside in the lock. Walters, come. Now look, it's all right. Evidence has already been bagged and tagged. I just stayed to give you the details. You know the Vic's name? It's a Miss Chelsea Church. Smell the body? You can smell it, I know. Kill was fresh. Happened not too long ago. In fact, it happened just before we got here, which is strange. The killer couldn't have gotten far, yet apparently he did. You should never get into that kind of life. Never. Lose yourself. Disgusting life. So I'll be alone tonight. Wanna grab a beer at the Buffalo? Didn't they tell you? What? What's happened? Buffalo is closed. It was a double, remember? Long night. Wise words. I don't know why. I you just need a night's sleep. Truth be told, yeah. Let's call this one, Tom. Just keep your eyes open, Walt. They're listening. Just keep looking for them. But don't let them know you're looking. What? Tom, I'm too tired for riddles. Who are they? Darn fool. Why haven't you figured it out yet? In all of your work, why haven't you noticed? What are you getting at? 
Just a precaution, Walt. They're listening. Keep an eye on the shadows. If you're losing it, I'm out of here. I woke up. I remembered Tom's ramblings about them and connected it to what Teresa had said. They allowed you to see what they wanted you to see. It was a cold realization. I nearly couldn't get out of bed. Miss Chadwick saunters through my door like a beautiful mystery waiting to be solved. Batting those piercing eyes at me like it could have meant something. A dame like her, manipulative, made of stone like cold fish. She wore a red shimmering gown and had no problem propping her assets for all to see. She had brought me the same news Tom had brought me earlier, and yet I didn't see it. This lady was all mystery, all sorts of wrong, and it had messed with my head. She let me go crazy, or had I let her make me that way? Most importantly, who are they? You can call me Knuckles after Walt. And now here's a word from our sponsor. Dick Amos Dog Platypus Farm is your one-stop shop for dogs and platypuses. They go good with macaroni and cheese, sushi, and ice cream. They make great blankets, and they are nutritious and full of calcium. If your boy or girl wants a great pet to love, then go on down to Dick Amos Dog Platypus Farm. I want some dogs and platypuses from Dick Amos' farm. And now back to our program. office. Rowell speaking. Yes, this is Detective Walters. I'm investigating the double homicide on a Miss Church and Miss Catlin. If you have time, I'll be there in five minutes. Don't worry. He'll never figure it out. Excuse me, Mr. Rowell, but I can still hear you, and can you not speak like I'm not listening? Y yeah. Just make sure the bodies are ready. No. We'll meet somewhere else. Preferably in a place with lights. Fine. Let's meet at Austin's Grill on David's Avenue. This could be the one to bring me to my knees and maybe go crazy in the process. I just stopped into Austin's and ordered a plain burger on bread with a coffee black. When in comes a sweat-soaked man looking for me. Of course it was Raoul and he had the look of a madman. A lot of stress was piled on me as I listened to the ravings of a cursed maniac. This coroner's report came to me as something from a pulp. Mr. Rowell, have a seat. Dolby, get the man a burger. On me. Right away, Walt. <laughs> it's you, isn't it? Detective Walters. You got something for me? Yeah. Hmm? Bro, slow down. They're just dead bodies. You deal with them day and night. Not like this, detective. This is different. No? All right. Where do I start? Well, I think you could start with the cause of death. Of course. Why don't we begin with their chests? Your Vic's chest. Um, practically crushed on the inside as if... As if someone or something had sat on their chest. What? Are you crazy? In darkness, I've seen them. Oh, no, you too. They're always hiding, listening. Just get on with how they died and skip the fairy tales. It was as if something had drawn the energy from their body. A tightness must have gripped their chest, causing pleurisy and swelling of the lungs. They went through pulmonary hypertension and suffered, choking while in some sort of sleep paralysis. They suffered a very slow and agonizing death 
or that's what they want the world to see. It seemed like a homicide, Detective Walters. Well, it was, but... But what? Did you do toxicology on their blood? You know, looking for strychnine? Maybe it's poison. What we came up with was nothing aside black spots on both the victims' chests. Sadly, no poison. What's so different about the spots? Bruising? Oh, nothing like that. In actuality, it is pretty strange. For they were more like beauty marks. Beauty marks? I saw their eyes. A portion of... Parts of the eyes were missing from the sockets. Are you hearing me? I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. I, I just can't fathom what I'm hearing, but go on. Those shadows that move. Everybody has seen them. They appear, then disappear. Only when you've had a long day. This is for you. Our uh, Miss Catelyn also had something. Oh, evidence? I have it now. But you can have it. Well, uh, what is it? Walters. She had something very important and very interesting to your case. It's not anything normal. I got just tell me already. We found this book in the pocket of her coat. It's an old sketchbook. Yeah. Hand drawn. Creepy and horrible. See those shapes? Uh, looks like uh, sketchy shadows on paper. Exactly. I should... Of course not. You stole evidence. Not that. Talk. I shouldn't talk. Then what is it? Oh, God, no. What is it? They are here, detective. Here? They are right behind me. I can't look or they will kill me. What? No one's even here. Look, but don't look. What are you talking about, Raoul? Do me a favor. Just keep the book and keep safe or they'll kill you. They don't like being seen. They feed off of fear. Okay? Here goes my peaceful day. It was that kind of day where you wished you'd never got out of bed. Today, everything just got to me and felt more sinister. I had that sketchbook to go on in the word of some overworked lab rat. My source did manage to give me the book, but as he ran out of Austin's that night, I had a funny feeling. I felt I was being watched by someone lurking behind. Oh, it's getting to me, no doubt. The coroner's report came to me in a creepy sort of way. I grabbed my fedora, lit up my last cigarette, paid the bill for my food, and walked on out. Why me? I shivered, walking out into the darkness. Here is where she waltzes in. Guy's lucky he only has to deal with her once. Guy's lucky he ain't me. This is what happened, uh, supposedly. This case was a real quandary. A couple of prostitutes killed by some kind of, what, shadow people? There's something written up in a pulp fiction. The victim, uh, Teresa Chadwick's missing girls, I knew were dead. There were black marks all over the victim. They found the bodies, so why did Miss Chadwick say something about them being missing? should have locked the doors when I had entered my office, for that's when it happened. I heard a very loud bang. The door swung open, and what little light I had went out. Trouble. In the shape of a vixen, with a very darkened outline, strolled in and walked all the way over to the darkest corner, eyeing me down with glowing red eyes. What? Yes, What, what are you saying? Someday 
years ago, you encountered Teresa. What? How are you in my head? That's how we communicate. Now to the point. Teresa. The Ter Teresa Chadwick? For many years, we have hid. Hid? Why? Hid from the humans. You, you mean... The people find us pain with their lies. Well, well, listen, I, I never know anything about it. Stand. We were ghost stories. Humans caught one of us. They hushed the whole thing. Who knows? <laughs> Lots of weirdos. God. I am not God. God has nothing to do with us. Then you're the work of Satan. Never been a religious man. Some have called us demons, ghosts, black mass, whatever you call us, we still exist. My saint? Oh, really? You're I have something for you. It's called a 38 Special. What? Where'd you go? Don't you know my name, Detective? It's you, isn't it? You know me. Teresa. Well, Chelsea Church is Catherine. Are you here too? Listen. Join us, Mr. Walker. <laughs> you took their souls? Foul thing. They were warned, of course. Warned? We're humans. We're humans with feelings and souls. What are you? A shadow? Where else are you then? <laughs> Much more. Like I said, what else are you? Are you? I don't know. You've always been there. Got one of your eye. In the dark. You're nothing to be afraid of. You're... I think it'd be a good thing to have you around. Of course you won't. I won't what? Won't what? At least you'll survive. What do you mean? What if this never happens to you? Every once in a while, you'll see us. It may be out of the corner of your eye or a movement in the darkness you didn't expect. Maybe. Just maybe. The hat man's right behind you! <laughs> Why don't you make me do it, Teresa? 
You have no control here, shadow being. All we want is to be left alone. It's so hard to ask for a detective. Then kill me. Stupid fool! I wish I could do something. If only. If only. Come on, then. Kill me. How much more can you take a human being standing against your race? Do you know what it will do to you? There's still so many masks in this world. Become one with the shadows. Everyone's gonna die one of these days. Why be afraid of your own shadow? Don't you know that your death will last? What in command? I made my peace. Do something! Protect yourself. Then that I realized she wasn't the only one in the room. But as my eyes adjusted in the darkness, I felt I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe in my chest height. My office filled with those shadow people. A feeling came over me of sheer dread. I felt a tingle of fear. Oh, and that was enough for them to feed off of. I let my guard down. I'll take your soul. It wasn't quick for me, and they swarmed in like a mass of bees. As my eyes closed in the swarm, I saw Teresa one last time. One more time before I blinked. And... I am the Hat Man! And now, our little tale has ended. At least for now. But when you least expect it, while you're at your home or alone, we'll be there. Keep the lights on if you don't want me to visit. Now that you have found j what do you think? Tonight's story, Shadow Noir, was written by j Ascent. All characters in this program are fictitious and were used in a fictitious manner. However, the theme of Shadow People may be a reality. Names of fictional characters are based off of the people the writer has met in his real life. If you have any comments, please leave them below. We would love to hear your feedback and stories of your Shadow Person experiences. This presentation, as well as the script, is copyright 2015 to JW Accent and JWorks, and is released under the subject Creative Commons. Share this with your friends, but please don't try to make money off of it, or the shadows will get you. <laughs>